Let's use the for loop to work with an array. We'll take an array of CD names and display them on a web page like this. If I open the Elements panel in Chrome DevTools, And you can see that there's an ordered list of city names. Each of these list items is one item in an array. Now let's write a program that generates this list by running through the array one item at a time. To code along with me, first download the course folder from the link in the description below and open it with your favorite code editor. Here I'm using Visual Studio Code. From the course folder, open the exercise folder called JavaScript Arrays. And then open the index.html file in the browser. In the index.html file, remember to link cities.js file. In cities.js file, you'll find an array named cities containing 10 city names. I'll start by creating a function named generate list items. Its job will be to take an array of elements and place each element inside a list item. So the function needs to accept an array as an argument which it will use to create the list. In the function definition, I'll add a parameter named org for the array. Remember, a parameter is like a variable that holds a value passed to the function. The array passed to this function will get assigned to this org parameter. The function should build up an HTML string that looks similar to this. In other words, it needs to return list items that can be displayed inside an ordered list. Inside the function, I'll define a variable named items to hold the list items and initialize to an empty string. With this items variable, I can build and store the entire string before returning it and displaying it on the page. The next step is to add a for loop that iterates through the elements in the array passed to this function. I'll initialize a counter variable named i and set it to 0. Then add a test condition as i is less than org.length. Again, this condition checks that i is less than the total number of elements inside the array passed to this function. In other words, the array assigned to this org parameter. Once i is no longer less than the array's length, there are no more elements to loop through, so the loop ends. Finally, I'll increase the value of i by 1 after each loop iteration with an increment operator like this. Next, I'll create the HTML list items. I can do that by building on to or adding to the current value of the items variable. I'll use the addition assignment operator and a template literal. To add a set of li tags, displaying the element from the array at the current index position. Remember, the i variable holds the current index value. So next, inside the li tags, I'll use string interpolation with dollar sign curly braces to insert the element at the index that matches the i variable. Now I have a loop that runs as many times as there are elements in the array assigned to the arg parameter. Finally, the generate list items function needs to return the value assigned to the items variable. You have learned that a function doesn't actually do anything until it's called or invoked. I'll save the change. Refresh the page. And in the console, I'll first test the function by calling the generate list items and passing it the cities array. I'll press enter and there's the full string holding the 10 list items. Notice how each element is inside its own set of li tags. Great. Now let's display the list items on the page within an HTML ordered list. There are several ways you might do this. I'll use a familiar method document.query selector This should select the main element in index.html 
Then to display the HTML inside main element, I'll use the inner HTML property. I'll set the property to a template literal to build the final string. Now I can use the generate list items function to display each item between ol tags. These values will be dynamically inserted into the final string, so I need to use string interpolation or the dollar sign curly braces syntax here. Inside the curly braces, I'll call the generate list items function and pass it the cities array. Finally, in index.html, just outside the main element, I'll add a heading to this page that says big cities. All right, let's test it in the browser. I'll save the change. Refresh the page. And here's our cities list. Now, any updates you make to the cities array, like adding a new city, for example, will appear on the page. Working with each element in an array or iterating through an array is one of the most common uses of a for loop. You can use arrays and loops together in many ways. For example, say you had an array of numbers. To find the average of the numbers, you could use a for loop to access each number in the array and add it to an ongoing total. Then when the loop is done, divide the total by the length of the array.